make sure you grab the safety glasses and you'll notice they're numbered that belong to your station. So when it's your turn, if you're in station one, you're gonna come up, grab station one safety glasses, put them on. For your hovercraft, you are going to need a variety of tools, and those will get pointed out in the... Now room. your instructor will point out if you need test batteries. In my room, they're right here in the holder next to the solder. If you need a pen, right at the beginning, they're once again right over here in the holder, and they are marked with a number for your station. So the pens are right here, test batteries are right here, solder's right here on the corner of my teacher desk in my room. You're going to need a variety of tools. One of the very first things you and your partner need to do is take your safety glasses and put them on. You're then going to go to the tool location and get a variety of tools. So we're going to start with showing you how to plug these in and how to put them away carefully and safely. With the soldering iron, you should find that when you pull this out, Right, you'll notice there aren't any lights on. It's not plugged in. It could be warm though from the previous class, so do not touch the metal part right here. We hold it once again, like the safety test said, by the handle. But you'll notice when I pull this out, it's wound around the holder. And you'll see that the part that plugs in is pulled tight against the holder. So when we go to put it away, I'm going to demonstrate that this gets pulled in tightly against here and then we wrap it up. But to plug it in, I unwrap it so that I can pull this cord through the holder. Then at your station, you're going to have a power strip and you're going to come over and you're going to plug your soldering iron in to the holder, making sure that there aren't any cords, such as the headphone cords that you'll be wearing, right? The mouse cord, making sure there's nothing over here and that this cord is not laying on top of anything hot. So I have that all pushed back and plugged in. Now you're going to notice that the lights have come on. That tells us that our power strip is on. If for some reason you wouldn't see any lights, your power strip is most likely turned off. Check with your instructor, they'll show you how to turn that back on. But so once again, I make sure the cords are not anywhere near the hot end of the soldering iron. I'm then going to take my glue gun, and once again, you can see how it's wrapped around the middle. I'm going to very carefully undo the glue gun, remembering that this metal part right here the warning sticker says will burn flesh, that's the hot part. I unwind the cord all the way from the glue gun. I then go ahead and set it down, once again making sure it's not touching any of the wires. And I plug my glue gun in. Once again down here on the power strip. Okay, so I have my soldering iron plugged in, my glue gun plugged in. They're now both going to be warming up. Now, when you are done using the soldering iron and glue gun, you're going to unplug them. Make sure you pull at the end of the soldering iron and the end of the glue gun, all right? So don't pull by the cord, pull by the actual end. Now, with the soldering iron, you're gonna make sure solder gets put back in the bin that your instructor showed you. Sandpaper would get put back where you were shown to get it from. But you're gonna take your soldering iron. You have the power cord. You're gonna pull that power cord all the way in. Once it's pulled in and against the holder, you can take the wire and you can wrap it around, going counterclockwise, the holder, until you get back into the end. So you would put the holder back, cords wrapped up, this would then be ready to be put away. With the glue gun, you're gonna go ahead and hold it down here by the handle, take the cord, wrap it right around the center, making sure the cord isn't touching the hot metal, right? And you would go ahead, put it back in the holder after you've wrapped the cord around the middle. You currently have your hovercraft nicely made with an air chute, 
and your battery holders. We now need to create our motor circuit. And to do that, we're gonna use a few other tools we haven't used yet, like the soldering iron and the wire strippers. But your glue bottle, your hole punch, we're gonna be done using these just like we were with the template, so you can make sure those get put away. Now, we will need this eventually, but for right now, we're gonna move that off to the side. And we're gonna get out your propeller, your motor, your switch, and your red and black wires for right now. And we're gonna work on attaching them to these and getting them soldered on. Now, first thing you're gonna need to do is you're going to need to take your red wire and your black wire and you're going to cut it in half. Now there's two ways you can do this. You can take a pair of scissors, go up to the wires, cut it right in half. You can also take that wire and on the wire strippers, there's a pair of scissors as well. You're gonna notice there's this little switch or this little bump right here on the left side. It's made for my thumb to fit on there and when I go like this, it releases that switch and they can open. And you're gonna notice right down here at the bottom are some scissors. Up at the top are holes. You're gonna use those holes to strip them, but you can take those scissor part down at the bottom, pull right in the middle, and cut your wire just like you did with the red one. But so you should end up having four little wires, two red, two black. Now, our next step is going to be to strip the ends of these wires. And to do that, I'm gonna come down and you'll see where it says 20, 18. You're gonna put this in the one that says 20. So right down here, you can see where it says 20 and you can see those little holes but I'm gonna put it in between the one that says 20, kind of going about a quarter of an inch down to half an inch down. I'm gonna put that right inside the hole that says 20. I can kind of wrap that around my finger a little bit and I pull that casing right off the wire. You're gonna have this little casing piece left over that gets thrown in the trash, but I'm gonna repeat stripping off the wire on all four ends of both the black and the red. So I'm gonna do that a total of eight times. I'm then gonna go ahead and twist the wire so it's all put together because it's a bunch of little strands. So I just take that wire, put it in my hand and twist them so they're nice and pointed. Once again, you're gonna do that to all of them. So once I have all four wires stripped on both ends and I have my little, script, my little shavings, I make sure my partner and I both take our little shavings, clean them up. Once again, take them to the trash can and throw them away. We're going to be attaching one red wire and one black wire to the switch, one black wire and one red wire to the motor. Now what you're gonna find, now what you're gonna find is there's these little tiny brass tabs down on the motor and you can bend them up a little bit if you need to, but you're gonna see that this wire just goes right through that little hole. And I'm gonna bend it over so it kind of hooks on to that motor. All right, so you can see it's hooked on to that motor. I'm then gonna do the same with the red doesn't matter which side it goes on. I'm gonna bend and hook that over the motor. So I have two wires kind of hanging on that motor. I went right through that little tiny hole right there at the bottom of the motor. Now I'm gonna do the same thing with your switch. And you're gonna notice there's these two little brass tabs with holes in them right down here on the bottom. And right now that switch is currently on top of those two little brass tabs. So that means the switch is on. If I slide it over, it's now off to the side of those little brass tabs and it would be off, right? Off to the side is off, on top is on. So when we go to look at it, when it's all put together, if it's over here on top of them, it's on. 
But once again, there's those little tiny holes. All right, and I'm going to try to get this where you can see it the best. But you're going to see there's that little tiny hole. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to push that wire through that hole. And once again, I'm going to make a little hook so it holds on to that wire. I'm going to do the same thing with the top hole. I'm going to push that wire through. I'm going to bend it over so it's creating a hook. All right? And you can see they're now hanging on both the motor and the switch. Our next step is going to be to go over to the soldering iron and solder. To do that though, we're going to need a piece of solder and your instructor will have shown you where that's located. Once you get a piece of solder, you're going to notice that the solder is real bendy, right? And some people are like, ooh, bendy, shiny, and they want to play with the piece of solder. What you're going to notice, and your instructor will probably have pointed out, is if you look at the spool of solder, it says, warning, contains lead, toxic if ingested or fumes inhaled, wash hands after using and before eating, right? Toxic fumes are released if overheated, respiratory and local ventilation may be required, right? So it's got all kinds of warnings on the bottom of solder. It's toxic, it's poisonous. The amount that you guys are going to use, right, we're not overheating it, but it's still not something you want to play with. So at the end of class, you're going to make sure you go to the sink, wash your hands when you're done using the solder. Now, we're going to take our switch and our motor, and once again, we're going to take our switch and motor, and once again, our feet can move, we're going to move over to the soldering iron. We're not going to bring the soldering iron to us, we're going to go to it. Now, when we go to solder our switch and our motor, we may need a piece of sandpaper to clean up our soldering iron because sometimes it gets corroded with what's called flux and we may need to clean it up. We can also use the sponge that's on the soldering iron to help clean it up and sometimes that's all you need. But for the sponge to be used, you need to wet it down. So the sandpaper if you end up needing it, if you feel like it's not working right, you can ask your instructor. They'll point out or tell you where the sandpaper is located. And I'm going to show you how to clean that up in a second. But first, if you have the sponge and you need to wet it down, you're going to go over to the sink. You're going to simply wet the sponge down, kind of squeeze it a little bit under the water, get it full of water, turn the water off, make sure it's all the way off, squeeze out all that excess water from the sponge. If you need a paper towel, dry your hand off. Once the sponge is wet though, you're just going to simply place it back underneath. So sometimes you can try just cleaning off the soldering iron on the sponge, just kind of rolling it around. But if it seems like it's not working right, you can carefully hold down a piece of sandpaper, keeping the soldering iron at a low angle. I'm turning it around and spinning it at the same time that I kind of lightly sand the tip and when you do you're going to notice how the tip becomes a nice bright brass color rather than the dark corroded color that will just guarantee that your solder is going to solder nice and easily once again i moved the soldering iron not the soldering iron to me i'm going to come down and i'm going to solder right down here where the the brass tabs are you're going to hold the soldering iron right against the brass tab and you're going to carefully bring the solder into the soldering iron and you're going to see it melt and run. When it melts and runs, you're going to kind of go 1-1000, let the soldering iron off and it'll come off. So once again, if I go to the other one and if you need to turn it around, you can. But I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to put the soldering iron against the brass tab. Bring the solder in, go one, one thousand, two, one thousand, letting it melt and run, and then moving it off. But you should see the solder kind of run like water, bonding to the brass tab, right? It shouldn't just be looking like a little BB or a bead. It should kind of run to the brass tab. Now you want to make sure your solder is not hanging on to the metal part of the motor. If it is, it's going to end up, if both these were touching on the metal over here, 
it will short circuit your motor. So before you go to put everything together, make sure that solder is just hanging off and that there's none touching the metal. If it would be, just kind of come in and push it with the soldering iron down. And you may even have to kind of lift up the motor and let gravity kind of help you get it down and away from the frame of the motor. You then would do the same thing to your switch. Once again, you would come down and you have these brass tabs, right, where the, the piece is. And you may need to have your partner kind of help hold. You can also sometimes use your wire strippers to kind of be a weight to help hold that down so it doesn't move on you. But once again, you're going to come in and you're going to hold it right against the brass tab so it's touching. And I'm going to go 1 1,000, 2 1,000 right when it starts to melt. So I bring it in, 1 1,000, 2 1,000, melt some on, let it run for a little bit, lift up. All right. Once again, I could spin it around or I could move. So if I don't want to get onto the one I just soldered, I could take it, lift it up. All right. So if I want to solder from the same direction, once again, I can use my wire strippers to kind of help hold it down. I hold that right up against the brass tab. I go one one thousand. Once it starts melting, two one thousand. Let it hold for a little bit. If I need to put a little more on. I do one one thousand, two one thousand and I let it go. Now, but what you're going to find is sometimes you might have to kind of lift up your switch and if you need to run the solder once again you can remelt it. Let it kind of run on to your switch but you want to make sure there's a gap between the two. If there's not a gap between the two your switch will be permanently on and if that happens you're going to need to take the soldering iron and just kind of hold it in the middle and let it run and it will splatter on the table, that's fine. But you need to separate that. Now when you have these done, you can double check. The wire should be nice and solid. You shouldn't see the wire wiggle around inside the hole when you wobble it. Right? It should be nice and solid. But so I now have my switch and you can see what I'm talking about right here. I have a nice gap between the two tabs, they're not soldered together, right? I can do the same on my motor. I can come double check to make sure they're on there nice and solid. That's all there is to soldering these first two parts. We're gonna have to solder them to some brass tabs in a little bit, but for right now, they're getting close to being ready to go into your hovercraft.